Okay, so my brother recently started learning React and he got really confused and had a lot of questions. So I wanted to make this video to answer his questions and hopefully help some of the people that have similar questions. So to start him off, I told him to either download Node and use Create React app or use something like Code Sandbox, um, which is an online React editor where you don't have to download or set up anything. You can just start coding React in the browser. But he opted to setting up Node on his computer and installing Create React app. And now that's what I have open right here in uh, Visual Studio Code. So his first question was, why do I need to install Node? Because he didn't actually use Node to, to do Create React app. And the reason you install Node is for something called NPM. So NPM is called Node Package Manager. And what it does is keeps track of, lets you install packages or install other people's code, third party libraries, that sort of thing um, for your projects. So you needed this and you actually need to install Create React App uh, with this NPM module. So you don't use Node directly, but you install Node because you need NPM and NPM comes with Node. So you can use npm from the command line. And first he needed to install create react app. So to do that, I told him to do npm install dash d create react app like this. And he didn't know what this dash g thing did here. And what that does is it installs it globally. And that means that all pack, all you can basically use it um, from the command line now. Uh, like a utility and installs it globally on your computer whereas regular npm packages are installed per project basis which I'll, which I'll get to in a second so after that he needed to run create react app at first he thought maybe he had to do something like this or npm run create react app like that um, but when you install it like this it actually is just installed kind of how npm is where it's just a command line utility so you can run it just like this, create React app, and then the name of your app, so hello world if you wanted to. And once you hit enter, if it installed correctly, it'll go ahead and install a couple uh, packages using npm, and it'll, it'll you'll see a little loading bar, and then your package will be, your project will be set up, and you'll see this stuff on the left. Now when you open up this, you don't see it on my left pane right here, but if I were to ls in the command line, there's this folder called node modules. And he didn't know what that was. And if I ls in there, there's a ton of junk. And node modules is all the dependencies or third party code or libraries that your project uses. So every time you start a npm or JavaScript project, you'll have a different node module. So if I did create react app in a different folder, I'm going to have two node modules and when I install React, I'm going to have React in this node modules and the node modules over there. So this is just the folder that contains all of that stuff right there. So now when I install dependencies without that G flag, like npm install React Tippy or any kind of library, what's going to happen is it's going to save that code into my local node modules. But if I don't want to install it to my node modules, I want to install it globally. That's when you do dash G. And that's why we did dash G before, because we didn't want that to go to our node modules folder since we didn't have one. We wanted to use it globally. So then there's this package.json file um, where it has all your dependencies and things um, to basically for your application. So it's kind of like a config file for your application. Here you'll see this script section. We'll talk about that in a second. But here you can see the depends, dependencies installed and the dev dependencies. So React, React DOM. The difference between these two is dev dependencies are ones you don't need for production or if you were to deploy your application. Um, so then to start this, now that you have create React app open, oops, and running, well, we don't have it running yet. To get it started running is npm start. So running npm start in the uh, folder that you have is started. What that does is it actually runs and you'll see it's gonna start up a server and at localhost 3000, I should be able to see the code that comes with create react app. 
And when I do npm start, what's actually being run is this script here. So npm start runs react scripts start. And react scripts is something that create react app gives us and it basically is just used to start up a server and to use uh, code reloading. And what code reloading is or hot reloading um, is when I start typing over here. So here's some jo here's a JavaScript file. If I were to save a change, what's going to happen is this is going to automatically refresh with the changes I make. So they have configured a server for you to uh, basically demo development server. So as you're running and developing code, you can see it refresh and see your code live over here. So this is what you should see when you first start. And he was very confused about where the where he should put code. Or there's a lot of files that come with the um, index or uh, the beginner create react app um, so there's testing CSS JS which one is he supposed to start in there's two JavaScript ones so in general you're gonna focus on the JavaScript files and there's two here so index.js and app.js and he saw render here and render here and that confused him because he wasn't sure what each render was doing and if they were different so index.js is the start of your application and look at what this does it says react dom render and it's rendering this thing right here and it's saying document I get element by id root so you should have gotten a public folder and inside of that a index.html and there is this div called root so it has an id equal to root so when they say render app what they're saying is look at this and this is because create react got this set up this way it's grabs this index.html and puts your react app right here um, and the reason it puts it there or at least it puts this code there is because we got that document by the id here root and then we decided to render it and so app.js you can think of um, as your main function or main component and everything is going to stem from this and the reason for that is this is what's being rendered onto the HTML and so that's what you actually see here um, so if we go into app.js we can see this correlates to all the code here so this is where you want to put all your code in this return statement <clears throat> so everything is going to stem from this app.js so he also didn't know what to do with uh, printing so you can console.log in JavaScript and he wasn't sure where that would go because there's this thing over here right this console and a lot of other programming languages it'll pop up in the console but with react or at least with create react app um, the default is if you go to right click inspect and then console you'll see all your console logs so that's how you print stuff so if you want to do print for debugging and notice how I have this outside you can also put this inside um, your render function and we should see this you notice how this refreshes and we see hello here again um, so it takes our code I just changed it and it refreshes the browser for us so he wasn't sure what was going on with this render function too so this component this is called a component we don't need that anymore this thing is called a component and we're exporting the component and by exporting it that just allows um, this index to import it so we can't import something that hasn't been exported so it's been exported so we can import it over there and this app we have to tell and this is the way to tell what a component renders is by its render function um, and you can think of this as what it displays what it shows on the screen and for the most part you're going to be returning what's called JSX right here is JSX so JSX is uh, basically a little bit different than HTML but you'll notice this looks very similar to HTML but there's a few oddities like what's going on here right you've never seen curly braces like that in uh, HTML before so it combines HTML and JavaScript and allows you to show HTML and JavaScript together so he wasn't sure where do you put your JavaScript code right so notice how this is a JavaScript variable up here logo and we want to use this JavaScript logo 
um, variable inside our HTML over here. So use these curly braces. So anywhere in your application that you wanna use JavaScript, you have to use curly braces, at least when you're returning. Up here, this is regular JavaScript. So I can make a variable, say const a is equal to I'm variable a, right? I'm variable a. And we can render a, right? But notice it's white. So Visual Studio Code, how that works is it tells you when you haven't rendered it as JavaScript. So it doesn't know that I want the variable a to be rendered in my application. All it knows is I want, uh, it thinks I'm saying welcome to React, right? Here's an a here. How does it know I want to do the, with the variable a up here? So you have to wrap it with curly braces and notice how the color changes on that. And so that's how you know, at least in Visual Studio Code, that it, this is gonna be interpreted as a JavaScript object. So now it's gonna say I'm a variable a here, but if I get rid of this, it's just gonna show the letter a, right? And inside these little braces, I can do a number of different things. I can do addition, um, I can do map through arrays. Um, we can see three, but this is not, you can't just do like, for example, const b is equal to uh, six. Everything you put signed inside these curly braces, I believe has to evaluate to something. So three plus four, that evaluates to seven. If I put a, that evaluates to this. So it needs to evaluate to something. Um, that way that, that can be rendered in uh, React. So whenever you wanna interpret um, what you put in here as JavaScript, you use curly braces, otherwise you just do regular stuff. And that pretty much answered all his questions, at least to get him started with this. I hope that helps some of you guys that are struggling to get started with React or had a lot of questions and were really confused because there are a lot of tutorials out there um, that each say different things. So I hope that helps some of you guys. That's it for this video.